Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here. Today I'd like to show you some gameplay from Lord of the Rings Adventure card game. This is being published by Asmodi Digital. They reached out and asked if I'd be interested in doing a sponsored video. And after putting a couple hours in and wanting to keep playing it, I thought this is going to be a good one to show you guys. So if you're like me, uh, you've probably played a bunch of CCGs or collectible card games in the past. And... If you're like me again, you might be dismissive of new ones that come up and think, well, okay, like what else, what could be new that I haven't played before? Uh, the key thing here is actually hidden in plain sight in the title, and that's the adventure part. What I mean by that is that, yeah, of course, this game has a lot of unique new mechanics. It should. Obviously, the characters come from the books and the movies. It's Lord of the Rings title. It should. Uh, but the way that the narrative is connected to the card game itself and the way that we deal with uh, certain objectives is really fun. And it's a it's a cool way of tying together the story that's being told. See, we go out in these campaigns and each campaign has multiple quests and each quest has multiple locations. And the idea here is that we're traveling through multiple locations. Some things carry over between them. We're not trying to just take the enemy's health down to zero. We're dealing with challenges and problems and objectives that come up, and it's all done through the playing of the cards, which is a cool way of doing things. And it'll make more sense when I can actually show you, but that's why I'm drawn to it. That's why I get something out of it. Um, as I mentioned, there are new mechanics, and there's a ton of mechanics in this game that you have to learn. Um, I'll try to explain as many as we can as we go, but it's going to be literally impossible <laughs> to cover all of them uh, in one video. I will point out a couple things before we dive into the single player game. Uh, they do have a multiplayer component. What's neat about this is it's not uh, you versus another player. It's a co-op campaign against Sauron. Sauron is the one that we're always playing against in every uh, mission or, or campaign. Uh, they also have a really cool deck builder. And I don't mean so much like the way that the that it's laid out and the way that you pick your cards. I mean like some of the... I, I don't, restrictions isn't the right word, but there's some unique ways that you have to build your deck. Uh, you have to have three heroes in each deck, okay? These heroes come out into the battlefield at the very beginning of play every single time. And then you have 30 additional cards that you're drawing from. And each of these guys belong to a different faction, uh, or sphere they call them. So the purple guys, these are leadership cards, okay? These are kind of like jack of all trades. They don't do anything specifically uh, unique. But then if you go into these guys who are more of a combat focus, I think they're called tactics. Yeah. Uh, these guys are obviously focused on dealing damage and uh, being able to fight. And what's cool about this is not just the fact that they're in factions, but when you look at other cards, they have these sphere levels. And so if you have a card that's got a sphere level of three, this means that you have to have three uh, heroes from that faction in order to play it. And it's unique because these cards are really, really powerful. But your overall deck composition may uh, have to concede in other areas to be able to utilize these cards, which is, I just think it's a cool way of doing things. It's pretty neat and uh, allows for some creative deck building if you're willing to invest the time. Uh, you're also going to notice that there's these fellowship coins in the top right. You don't use real money to buy these. You gain these through the game and you unlock them in a pretty regular clip and you use them to buy specific cards. Uh, so as an example, if we wanted to buy this Citadel plate here, we could unlock one copy of it for 1,000 or two copies for 2,000. You can only have two copies in a deck at any given time, and that's why you can unlock uh, up to two of them. So we'll say that's, just, that's how it works. Simple. Uh, you're going to notice up here, I said you don't buy, like, uh, you, you're buying specific cards. You can buy card or hero packs, I should say. But you're not buying random cards. You know what you're getting. And it actually even gives you uh, hints as to encourage what type of deck you should build around this. 
So I, I think that the way that they're doing this is the right way to do it. And uh, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to support that. Now, um, I think we'll just jump in because there's a lot to show you. Uh, at the end of the video, I will share my thoughts on what things I really like and some of the things I think could be improved, and there definitely are some. If you're interested in the game yourself, uh, I'll have links down below. It's available on PC right now. I think it's about 20 bucks US. And later this year, it's coming out on Xbox, PS4, and I'll personally be picking it up on the Nintendo Switch. So that I, I think it's just a perfect fit for that system. Um, but that's not to say that's not a good experience on any of the others. I just think it's going to be great on the Switch so you can play it whenever you want. Um, okay, so let's go in and start a single player campaign. Now, I will highly suggest that when you come in here, don't just jump into campaign. Nothing's going to make sense. Go through the tutorial. There's five quests in here. You switch them uh, through these little pictures here. It even takes you through deck building, which is which was actually really enlightening, very eye-opening for different card types and things that I wouldn't have gotten had I not gone through a deck building tutorial. And uh, once you go through all of these, then you can start on uh, campaigns or you can go to like encounters if you want. These are kind of like one-off things. But uh, the campaign is really, I think, where this is going to shine and it's where the story comes in. So this campaign is called The Shadow's Reach. Uh, an anguish gloin arrives at Bjorn's Hall with dreadful news. A great spider has captured Bilbo Baggins. He beseeches a hearty band of heroes to help rescue his dear friend. Seems all nice on the surface. Uh, things are going to get crazy. So before we just dive in and start the quest, a couple things I do want to point out. We can uh, choose which deck we want to use. We can use a custom deck. I made one called Tolkien Tickles. I don't know. It's it's a terrible deck. We're not gonna we're not gonna be rolling with this. I based it around the three uh, the three heroes that came in the starter deck. I'm gonna try a pre built one, and it's gonna be one that. I haven't played before because then I'll get to kind of experience some new stuff along with you and uh, might learn a few things as well. So we have uh, battle decks, explorer decks, leadership focus. You can see we've got two from the faction there. This has one of each faction, which means... And the way that I look at this is like, if you have one from each faction, you're not going to have like super powerful cards because of that restriction I mentioned in the deck building section. Um... We can go into tactics focus, which is going to be more like battling. Uh, uh, you know what? I want to pick one with with uh, with only one from each faction because that'll give us a wider variety of cards. And I think that'll be better to show you guys. We'll go with a battle deck here and uh, we'll see how this works. Uh, you can also pick a play style. Narrative is very much just like you want to focus on the story. The battles and the encounters are pretty basic. Adventure is somewhere between uh, basic and challenging. So we're going to go on adventure. Um, lastly, let's not actually go into that. Uh, you can look at different rewards. So if you do quest challenges, you can earn these uh, coins through here by doing any of these individual things. Hall of Heroes, you can earn um, a whole chunk of coins by playing through this with different heroes. And you can see like there's a ton of them. So you're going to earn these coins and unlock cards super quick. And if you really want to, you can go in and see the cards that Sauron will be playing. And then you can build a deck to kind of counter that uh, if that's your thing. So you can get as much or as little out of the deck building as you want. Uh, but for now, I think just showing you guys the game is going to be uh, ideal. So without further ado. After arriving at Beyond's Hall, you've learned the famous Bilbo Baggins was taken by Mirkwood Spiders mere hours ago. Without hesitation, you volunteer to find and retrieve the Hobbit. Hopefully before he's consumed. Or worse. Hopefully. And so you find yourself before Greenwood the Great. That the wary and the wise call Mirkwood. A sleeping evil once inhabited the Greenwood, but was purged many years ago. The forest has since known a period of peace and the return of wholesome life. As the shadows now gather under the trees, you sense a foulness on the air. You fear evil may have returned to this realm. So, it, I, this is not like a review video by any stretch of the imagination, but I just want to say look, the voiceover work is really good. 
really we appreciate begin to search it. search for clues as to which direction the spiders took Bilbo. There are ample signs of recent struggle in the small glade, and several of the hobbit's possessions are strewn about. After a few moments, you notice a gleam of metal on the forest floor. Perhaps a sign. You're about to investigate, as several giant spiders creep into the glade. They don't seem at all interested in assisting the search. Quite the contrary. Okay, here we go. I will go and look on the halls of Durin. Do what you will, but I will hinder it if I may. Okay, so, uh, being that this is going to be a completely new deck, might be tough to figure out which cards we want to discard. I don't know that we need these duplicates. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to swap this out so we get a larger variety of cards here. Now, you're looking at this screen, you're thinking, okay, I don't know what any of this means. So I'm going to explain some of this to you, and then we'll get into the actual, like, battling portion. So our goal in this location is to resolve Glint of Steel. Or defeat every enemy in play. Alright, what's Glint of Steel, you ask? Let me show you. So this card here, you can right-click on any card to, like, bring it up and see what it does or what its properties are. So Glint of Steel, is, remember in the in the voiceover that we just heard, we saw a Glint of Steel, uh, something gleaming under the leaves of this tree. And so this is the objective. It's got eight... This is willpower, okay? We have to use willpower from our heroes or our allies, which are other basic level cards that we bring in, to deal with this objective. Um, the, the trade off here is that because of the way that the turns are structured, it's you're always doing this balancing act of like, should I be focusing on putting my willpower into objectives or focused on taking my actions to deal with enemies. Notice up here it says we can defeat every enemy in play as a as a way of winning, but he's going to be constantly playing enemies too. So like, how do we keep, keep up with that? It's going to be challenging. Um, at a really basic level, I'm just going to point out a couple of other icons here. This is the card's attack. This is the card's total health. This health does not regenerate uh, at the end of a turn or anything like that. Um, you can heal, but it doesn't regenerate. This is the cost to play the card, and that comes out of your energy or your resources. Um, we start with three, Sauron starts with four. You can see the cost of some of our cards here. This one costs three. He's got two attack, one willpower, and five uh, health. He's also got a special ability called Surge, which means he gets an immediate action. So typically, uh, when you play a card or you do an attack, or you use an ability, that that counts as your, uh, I don't want to say turn, because I don't want to confuse things, but that's, that's your, uh, that's your, that's your action, okay? The way that the, yeah, we'll call it a turn. I take that back. We're going to call it a turn, because you get multiple turns within a round, and you alternate turns with Sauron. So regardless of what we do, Almost everything costs our turn, and then it's his turn. It's going to flip back to ours, and until nobody can do anything else, and then the rounds reset, and you'll see how that works. Uh, we're going to take a look at these bars on the left and right, then we'll review our abilities, and then we're going to get going. So this bar over here is our threat meter, and this is kind of an indicator of Sauron's strength. Now, we're starting off at 29. You might be asking yourself, well, why are we starting off at 29? Great question. You're already doing great. Uh, all of our heroes that we select when we build a deck, or we choose a deck in this situation, these guys each have individual uh, threat values. So he comes in with a threat value of 10, Gimli comes in with a threat value of 10, and Eowyn comes in with a threat value of 9 for a total of 29. So if you bring in more powerful heroes, your threat meter is higher. Once you get to 50, this is, I mean, that's really bad. Uh, but you're going to hit some of these thresholds. Like, this one's only six away. And uh, at these levels, something happens. In this one, he's going to summon a Brood Elder. This is a very powerful spider. And if it's based around a spider deck, it's going to be bad. Because at the end of every round, he's going to add one health to every spider. That's bad news. Don't like that. Um, 
So we want to try to avoid this increasing as much as we can, which means being timely with our decisions and our actions and not letting the, the game drag on too long. On the opposite side, we have a fate meter. So you might recognize this, uh, this color and the diamond icon because as you probably have guessed, uh, our willpower on each of these can be used for objectives, but also can be used to fill our fate meter. So as an example, uh, one of the things we can unlock that is location specific, so we can only use it if we're on this specific map, is we can look for supplies in the old hobbit's backpack, and that will get us this card Lembus, which restores two health to one character, and it readies the character. Readying means that uh, you can use it again. Once a card has been used on your turn, it's unavailable to be used until the next round. It's called Exhausted. And this would restore that so you could use it again. If you put three willpower in here, you can exhaust up to two spider units. That might be pretty good because this is all spiders. Um, that's not bad. I think it's pr a decent option. At seven, you can summon in Gloin, who's a super powerful hero. Uh, he's got 11 uh, health to deal with, not a lot of willpower, but he can tank a lot. And he's got a cool power as well. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, if, it, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll try to explain, but you'll see as we start playing here. So let's just review our special abilities. So he's going to get uh, plus one attack and plus one willpower if he's at six or more health. We want to keep his health high. Seems good. He's also a dwarf. Uh, Gimli gets plus one the first time a character takes damage this round. So we don't really want to lead off with him. We want somebody to take damage, and then we would attack with him. And uh, Eowyn, she's got plus two will the first time a character takes damage this round. Kind of the same idea. So her will is actually going to get boosted pretty heavily each round. Uh, within our hand, we've got Dwarven Axe. So we can equip people with uh, weapons. Uh, I'll actually show you here. Where can I... I think I have to equip one first, but once something becomes equipped, uh, something will show at the top. You can attach weapons. Uh, there's armor. There's like a special ability, and then there's a shadow thing that we can equip. Okay. Um, Will of Steel applies one hero's strength as progress towards one objective. That's actually really nice because we can say, okay, this guy's got a strength of three, or in this guy's situation, well... Yeah, okay. He will eventually have three. Um, we can say, okay, turn that into essentially willpower to put it towards an objective, which is quite nice. Warrior Sword is another weapon attachment. Um, this is nice because we get plus two if we're a dwarf, so we can boost these guys super quick because they're dwarves. And then we can use this to deal with a lot of um, willpower objectives. He's got Surge, so he can be played, uh, he can do actions right away. And then Guard of the Citadel, he has Guard. And this is kind of, this is really important. This is a, uh, a taunt, basically, or uh, a way to draw aggro. So if you have Guard, or if you use a defense mode, which is the last thing I'll show you before we actually play, uh, he will draw aggro from the next attack. So this is, this is really helpful. Uh, lastly, there's icons underneath these guys. And... Uh, this one just puts their willpower into the fate meter to build this up. You can also drag and point it at that if you want. Uh, and then this one puts them in defense mode, which gives them the guard. And this is a this is really important because when they're guarded, they do uh, retaliatory damage when they get attacked. So I hope that makes sense. Let's let's begin, shall we? Let's just begin. So there's a couple of things at play here. Um, I think because these guys are relatively weak and we don't have a ton of willpower right now, we're going to start by just boosting our uh, our teammates here. So let's put this Dwarven Axe out. We're going to put it on him. So he's going to get a pretty nice boost here. And I want you to notice a couple of things that just happened. So number one, uh, that cost me one, so my energy dropped to two. Uh, He's now at, at five attack damage because of his attachment. So that's a weapon attachment. Here's the uh, the armor. This is the special one. And this is shadow, which is has a lot of different uh, effects, which we might see. Um, 
Also, we got attacked. So this forest spider attacked him. Notice we did no damage back to him at all. We didn't do anything. And this, the way that this game works is when you're attacking, you're the only one dealing damage unless that enemy is in the guard mode that we kind of talked about before. So we have a couple of ways that we can uh, handle this actually. I, I would typically recommend that we focus on the objective. That's not, it's always easier said than done. But because of this Will of Steel that we've drawn, we won't always get this card because it's one out of 30. Um, we can apply this hero's strength as progress towards one objective, which means if we play this, and then we just use her willpower because she's boosted because somebody took damage. We can kill this thing in two turns, which means we are going to take at least three damage. I would assume he's going to attack. He's going to attack. He might play cards. And what's cool about this is that uh, if you attack, that's your turn. If you use an ability, that's your turn. If you play a card, that's your turn. And so you really have to consider... All, which option is going to be best before just like spamming stuff because you don't get to just spend all of your cards and use all of your uh, all of your characters and then they go it's not like that it swaps every time so uh, let's see now you're, you might be wondering well can I stack this on here no you would have to replace it um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try that approach and see if we can get into the next area really quickly so we're going to apply this five damage as progress towards this objective. So this should go down to three. Now it's his turn. He's just attacking. And now this is actually, this is a super fast way of getting through this location. Um, however, we are just going to do it. We're going to attack. We're not, I shouldn't say attack, but we're going to use our willpower to resolve this objective. If you touch him. So now, lying on the forest floor is a small elven blade. Beautiful, strong, and light. This must be Bilbo's sword. Sting, a valuable treasure. Cool. Uh, so click the checkbox to move on. Now we've got another weapon attachment. We've completed the goal for this location. We can travel now to avoid the looming threat. Okay, the looming threat is like, obviously, this threat meter building up. But also just the enemies that are here. If we run away, then we don't have to face these enemies anymore. There is a bit of a catch. There's a bit of a catch. See, he's going to act. Now, if I travel here, um, this may... It, he can still attack with this enemy, uh, which isn't super bad in this scenario. It's only one damage. Uh, but it is something to be aware of that we could consider something like, hey, maybe we should attack this guy, then travel. Uh, but he could play another card... And then because it's not exhausted, notice here when we want to travel, it says unexhausted enemies may attack. That might even be a stronger enemy. So we're probably better off just leaving right now um, instead of like equipping stuff because then he's going to do the same thing. So we're just going to travel. He's going to probably deal one damage. They're, they've been targeting her pretty heavily, so they might just throw it on her. Let's see what happens. Ah, he went on him. Okay, fine. So now we're traveling. First location... Done. Bilbo's mind must have been clear during the first moments after his capture. You notice that he slid his sword along the undergrowth as he was hauled away. When the spider's poison immobilized him, he must have dropped Sting. Encouraged, you venture into the shadowy green-gray wilderness that is Mirkwood. And so again, you're seeing like the the uh, tie-ins between the narrative that's being told in the voice over here, and then the actual game itself with dealing with that type of objective. And we found. Bilbo's sword. So we might even get hints as to what we find in these objectives, or sometimes you're not even finding stuff. We'll see what the next one is. The small cocoon is dropped before the lady. Ha! It's it, my lady. Scrumptious it is. Taste. Sweet. <laughs> Sound familiar? The creature squeals in pleasure and anticipation, jumping to and fro on arms and legs as if a spider himself. The creature gives the cocoon a kick. False it is! Baffins! Trickster! Thief! Cheater! Callum! Callum! Eats it! Eats it! The enormous spider moves to hover over the cocoon. 
Spear-sized mandibles emerge slowly from its dripping maw. Suck it to bounces, milady! No hanging this, or drying this needle. My tough dwarfses, or tricky elveses. Sweet and juicy habitus. Just leave closes, milady. Ow! Ow! For precious, precious, he's in its pocket, sus. My precious. <laughs> Spider monstrosity. Voice are pretty, pretty good. Into a needle, when a sudden noise is heard from the edge of the lair, flapping its hands nervously and bobbing its scrawny neck. Creature pleads. Oh, don't listen to what the noises, my lady. Eat, eat, while habit is warm. Someone has arrived, and the spiders move to greet them. For hours you delve into the menacing forest. Thorny undergrowth and sticky crawlers grab at you as if with minds of their own. A subtle change in the echo of the wood heralds a change in scenery. And you soon come upon a dark, gurgling stream. While the watery smells and soothing sounds relax you, you've been warned not to trust any water in Mirkwood, save for that gathered from fresh rain. The spiders must have crossed the stream by traversing the canopies above. But how will you cross? A nearby dead tree may be the answer. You attempt to push at the dry trunk, hoping for it to fall and bridge the stream. Unfortunately, your efforts attract the local wildlife. Now, uh, in some parts of the game, there are actually choices to be made during these narrative things. I example, in this scenario, it says, how will you cross? Y you may be presented with uh, decisions as like, oh, go back the way that you came or go down a more dangerous path, but it's faster or things like that. And you have to make a decision and, and see what happens. Okay, so. All of these guys, all, everything carried over from that location, which is, uh, this, this is what I really like, but the enemies are refreshed now, and we have a new objective. Notice, though, like, we have to focus on, if possible, healing guys, or make sure that they're not taking a lot of damage. It's, it's tough to keep these guys alive, but you have to, else, was, you know, you lose. So we need to find a way across the stream. Okay, so... Uh, one thing I, I want to point out now, you notice we have four energy. He's got eight. Okay. So, the way that this energy works is if you don't spend it, it carries over. So, to play more expensive cards, you kind of have to save it up. And you want to... I mean, strategically, you want to be paying attention to how much he has. Because he could spam a whole bunch of cards right now that could be devastating to us. Um, but we don't know what he's got. So, it's kind of tough to say. Uh, these guys coming in with guard, I actually really like because uh, they're going to tank attacks for us, and when you're guarded, you deal damage back, which is super crucial. Um, there's a location-specific uh, threat here at 33, so he, ex he would exhaust a random ally from our side, obviously, and then it does not ready again on the next upkeep. So that means for two whole rounds, the, uh, the ally that we have out there wouldn't be in use pretty much now these are heroes any basic card that we play is an ally so that's the key differentiator there we have a location specific thing here too and uh that's where each player gains one honeycomb location specific we get to choose remove pursuit from every enemy pursuit is uh on some enemies that will follow us from one location to the next or we can restore two health to one character, which is pretty good for a one-cost card. Um, but you also have to consider the actions that we put in there. We can unlock uh, the the two spider unit thing at level three, which doesn't really impact us here. We got bats, rock adders, and hummer horns. They're all uh, creatures. We have location-specific thing where we gain a Mirkwood water, where we get to exhaust one enemy. It's not bad. This is a zero-cost card, but again... It's the trade-off of, do we go towards the objective? Do we deal with enemies? Do we go into our uh, our fate meter? And then we have uh, Gloin again, where we can summon him, but we need seven willpower. So let's see how we're going to tackle this. Um, I think straight away, we're going to bring in some of these guards. Now, these guys, they have special abilities. They're flying. 
which means uh, we can't straight up attack them, but we can defend ourselves against them. And if we have guard, then we'll deal damage as well, which is quite nice. Cool thing that they, the way they treat flying in this game is once the flyer does an attack, then he's exhausted, just like you would normally be from a, a regular attack of a melee character. Uh, but they're no longer flying when they're exhausted, so then you can, ta then you can kill them, right? Uh, at the end of the round, then he's gonna summon an extra Hummer Horn. So this guy is like, priority number one, he's gotta die. This Rock Adder is okay, it doesn't do a ton of damage, not super worried. This guy also has flying and he's got revenge, so when you kill him, he's gonna summon a Black Forest Bat, which is like, uh, I think it's a weaker variant. Um, now notice, okay. So the goal here is find a way to cross the stream. This is, the way we're going to do that is to down a tree. We need to push over the tree to bridge the stream. Problem is, we have a blocked path. So remember the narrative that was just explained to us. This obstacle is keeping you from engaging any other objective, which means we need to clear the path first, and then we can go into downing the tree. Okay, how are we going to do this? Let's figure it out. Um, I'm going to play these guard guys first. So he comes in, he's got guard. Now, that guard is removed. It doesn't last the entire time, but what it does is it just absorbs an attack, and we get to deal a little bit of damage with him as well. Um, if I bring in this one, pretty likely that he's going to either attack with this Bat Swarm, or the... I mean, he will attack with one of them, and uh, we'll deal with it when it comes up. So let's... Uh, let's do this. Let's bring in another guard. Tank more damage. Now what's cool is because these guys aren't flying, uh, we can we can kill them. And because this guy is weak uh, and hasn't attacked yet, we can kill him without any repercussions. So I need three damage on him. These guys can be dealt with with our lower dudes. Um, so actually we're in a we're in a pretty good spot here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this. <laughs> He's likely going to play a card now, because he's got nothing else to do. All right. We're, we're in a pretty good spot. This is a good start. So, this rat has an upkeep. So, at the beginning of every round, it's going to deal one damage to one random character. It's not the end of the world. But, at the end of a round, he's also going to heal himself for one. So, we kind of want to just kill him, if we can. Uh, and, I would like to try and save... Uh, this guy, because he's got two willpower that we could put towards this. These guys have zero, so we have to wait till the next round to deal with it. But we can just straight up kill the card that he just brought in. So it's actually a pretty, pretty good. Oh, he's got more rats. Are you serious right now? Okay, 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 okay. So what could his rats do to me here? Well, he's going to deal damage to a random character, which, you know, it's not terrible. Um, these guys... It, hmm. Now that their guard is gone, like, I... Because they have no willpower, right? So I might as well just try and... try and do some damage here. Um, I Now, one option that we have... Actually, this is this is what we will do. So, within here, we've got uh, a couple of different choices. Uh, we can set up defense so that we can give guard uh, for the next attack. And because these guys came in with that ability, it's gone. We can just re-add it. We could add it here too, but again, I think it's better off using her willpower on this uh, blocked path. So, we're going to just absorb some damage here. And plus, we'll start to whittle them down a bit. That's what these guys are for anyway. So let's do... Let's put the willpower into here. Brings it down to one. Okay. So he's brought in the Muck Adder. Attacks the character with the lowest current health. All right. Well, um... Hmm. So the thing is, if I attack him... I don't think it matters the way that we handle this, actually. If I attack him, he's going to go down to, to one, and then he's going to kill this guy. If I... 
Actually, no, that it does matter because he'll kill him because he's the lowest health. And then uh, this guy will be at two health and he can use uh, defense maybe next time. It's not bad. Now, this is one of the challenges, right? Coming from playing other card games. You might be thinking, well, just play your warrior sword. Doesn't cost anything. Upgrade, the, upgrade his damage. If I do that, I don't get to act this turn again. He's going to just attack this guy. And then I'm basically in the same situation? Uh, or maybe not. Maybe not. But the, the point I'm trying to make stands in that this is not just a free action, right? Everything that we do, whether it's playing a card, playing an ability, uh, triggering an ability on a card, making an action, uh, putting uh, willpower into an objective or a fate meter, everything costs us our turn. Uh, the only thing it doesn't cost a turn is redeeming something from the fate meter. So that's something that might come up later. Um... So, if I... Hmm. Thing is, is that this guy's weak, and I just don't know if it's worth putting this this sword on him. Because I could put it on somebody like Gimli, right? Who would take him up to four, basically. Um, and I, I wouldn't mind keeping some, some uh, energy or mana to carry over into next round. Because uh, the other option is we do the attack, takes him down to one, he kills this thing, then we have to do another attack to kill it. Basically two actions. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... I'm, I'm hesitating. It's, probably, it's not a big deal. I'm just trying to show you guys the game anyway, but I'm like, this is how into it I get. I'm like, I got to make these decisions. And I'm trying, because you're trying to think for the future, because there's multiple locations that we need to travel through. So keeping everybody alive is, is really uh, beneficial. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Let's give it to him. So he's going to attack this guy. Because he has to, based on his uh, ability. Um, we, oh, actually, actually, right, right, right. Um, we should kill this because at the end he's going to bring in the, uh, the Hummer horns. This guy does more damage, but he's, this guy's more of a problem. <laughs> so let's do that. Okay, now, this is good. He just played a, uh, a treachery card. We have things that are called uh, preparation cards, I believe. Yeah, preparation sockets. So we don't know what this is, but when I do something that satisfies its trigger, it will play, and I have no way of knowing what that is. I have my own preparation cards. I don't know if we have any in this deck because uh, it's a pre-built deck, but I can play a preparation card. He won't know what it is, and then it'll trigger when he does something bad. So there we go. Um, we have an option to equip our weapon, or we carry over some energy, and I actually think we're going to carry over some energy, because I feel like we're in a pretty decent spot here. Because the only other thing I would do is equip this, which is good against spiders and orcs, but we actually don't have any of those out right now. So... Okay. So he played that at the end of that round. And if you didn't catch what it is, we do have a history thing here. So, uh, let's see. He played this one. He played Despair, which is a shadow attachment. And if we attack that enemy that has this card, it's going to gain plus one threat. So we're already at 31 out of 33 which I really don't want to hit, and this is location-specific. So if we attack him, then uh, then this triggers. Which means even if we set up, like, this guard, right, um, that he now has again because the round is refreshed, if we set this up, or, or if he attacks this, then that still counts, and that'll increase this threat, which is, uh, you know, not cool, obviously. Um, I think what we'll do is... 
And we might just have to bite the bullet on it, honestly, because mm, I think it's just that's how it's going to be. I am going to utilize one of these guys. Who do we have here? Erebor Watchman. Okay. So he's got a block, which basically just reduces uh, one damage taken from the attack, which is you know, it's good. But he, he doesn't have a way of forcing the attack. I could bring in uh, the Warden here for two damage on the Snake. But he's really good to use a, uh, to use for blocking. Uh, let's see. The only concern I have is that we're, we might eat up an attack with this guy. Hmm. I'm going to do it this way. Oh, oh, okay. So his treachery card was to exhaust the next, uh, the next ally that enters play. So he comes in, and while my plan was to either A, just attack, or B, set up a block, uh, I can't do that now because it's exhausted. So good for him. I'm happy for you. That's great. Okay. So let's assume he's going to attack there, and we'll trade, and we'll both die. That's fine. We can use... Uh, if I use him to kill her... Or to kill this snake. I want to try to keep her one willpower to deal with this tree. Oh, so he went that way. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh. Hmm. I mean, I can set up the, the block here again. Do that trade-off. That's going to increase this. And it brings in the Black Forest Bats, which also has flying. Fine. It's not a ton of damage. Um, I guess one option is... We can do this. Because he's got less willpower. So it gets rid of that. Now we have access to clearing out the... Uh, to, to pushing the tree over to bridge the stream. And... While it's tempting... It's definitely tempting to just, like, kill off one of these. I'm going to focus on the objectives. That way... Oh, okay. That's a bit scary. That's a bit scary. So it's stalwart... Um, is bad because he gets to attack twice basically sometimes the tooltips won't show in it i don't know why but it's annoying uh the unit does not exhaust after their first action each round unless another effect states otherwise so that's a lot of damage so he can get six damage in on anything he wants and we have no way of defending uh, unless i put this guy out and then he can block the next attack I'll do it. We'll not be taking yeah, see, he gets his free. I'm glad he attacked him. That's fine. But if I set up to uh, to defend, he's going to attack here. We get a little bit of damage in. He's playing another card. Oh. Okay, what's this? All right. So he's th he's throwing out another objective, basically, and this is the this is where it gets really challenging is because this thing is hurting us the longer it stays in. Exhaust every ally that enters play. So if we're going to play another hero or another uh, ally card, we're in trouble. We're in trouble because it can't be used. At this point, it's not a huge deal, but um, this might not be bad to play, but we don't have to play it now. We can play it at the end of the round. Um, what I might do is because we know that she's going to get plus two when somebody takes damage... She can end this. I can't end it with one go here. I might as well kill something off that's going to deal a bunch of damage, like this warg. So... Let's do this. That's fine. Now she gets the plus three. We use this. No living man am I. 
We crossed the stream. We completed the goal for this location. Travel now to avoid the threat. Uh, what we can do is actually kill off this rat before we go. So that he doesn't get to... Um... Oh, right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, that's fine. We have it. We have it. We do have a trade-off to make here if we want. We could take... Uh, we could start building some fate meter because this does carry over between rounds. Um, he doesn't have anything can attack, but likely he's going to put something in. I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to put some willpower here. Let's see what he plays. So he's got an adder. Which means he's going to attack the creature with the with the or the character with the lowest current health um which means this guy's toast but it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter either way it, it doesn't matter either way cuz if i block here then uh he, then he'll he'll die but he'll have done his work anyways cuz we're going to travel and, and ditch this thing so what I'll actually do is I'll put this into here as well. And I don't think I'm going to cash this in. See, that was his turn. Now we could run and we'd be fine. Um, we could... we I mean, we could grab that card. It's okay. We don't have any enemies with pursuit right now. Restoring two health is definitely nice and would be valuable. Um, exhausting spider units is good. I, I don't know if we're going to get to this seven. I mean, we might if we really need it. We could take this opportunity to, um, to boost somebody. Because he might not have other cards to play. Put it on him. Okay. Ah. Uh. Okay. That's actually fine. That's actually fine. It doesn't really impact us because we're now going to travel. So, um, I wonder if I should play this now or travel. Hmm. I. You know what? I'm going to play this now. That's fine. And now we are going to run. Cool. Okay. So hopefully you guys are starting to get an idea the dead tree how this works. Across the stream with a splintery crack. You use the fallen trunk to step across. Careful to not slip. What could cause wild creatures to attack so? Perhaps the corrupted stream is their main source of water. As you jump off the trunk on the far side, a deep rumble greets you. For a brief moment, you wonder what could make such a sound, but only for a brief moment. For out of the shadows shambles an enormous black bear. It roars. The sound is staggering. It fills the air like a living thing, terrifying and primordial. The impact of the roar sends you reeling backwards, almost into the stream. It charges. An avalanche of fur, teeth and claws. Oh, okay. <laughs> Defeat Kiros. Well, that'll be fun. Okay, what do we got here? What's this? Plus one threat every time we play a card. More to bear. Summon two wild bears? Whoa. That would be bad. And they have Stalwart and Pursuit. Okay, now, uh... <laughs> okay. This is gonna be really difficult. So let, let's see how he's gonna act here. He's gonna exhaust any character that he attacks. Fine. Uh... If I attack, I take him down to eight. If he attacks here, he's exhausting. But he's going to be exhausted too. 
And I'm just hoping that he doesn't exhaust her, because if she takes damage, uh, or if somebody else takes damage... Actually, maybe the better play is to... Um, is to guard with him. That'll guarantee that he takes some damage. Or I wonder if I guard... What if I guard with him? He has some health to spare. My The worry, of course, is that he, he ends up dying uh, on the next round. But... We would guarantee that we take him down to uh, 8. These guys deal... Well, he'll deal a plus 1, so he'll take him down to 4. Then she would take him down to 2... Oh, we'd be one short. We'd be one short. Um, but I could play this and take take the one threat. Because what I was thinking is we could get rid of this uh, objective, this low on supplies, because she'll get the plus two uh, willpower from somebody taking damage. I just don't know. I think he's more valuable. So I think maybe I should... I should guard with him. Or the or the, maybe I just guard with him. And he's just going to be gone, whatever. But he takes the damage, he gets the boost, and then we go 5 4 for 9 uh 2 for 11. He's got two health left. Right? And I don't have to play a card. We don't we, he's going to cast other stuff, I'm sure. Right? Oh, what's this? So, because we have this, ready one character for each player. Uh, deal one damage to each. Ignores block. Oh, that's actually... I think we can kill him. I think we can do it. Um, just depending on if he, what, if he plays cards or if he attacks. Let's see. Alright, he's gone in. Okay. Okay. Ready one character for each player. Now I feel I think the way that this is written for each player means like just me. Um not the end not like me and him. And it says each player because we're playing co-op. I think that that would uh, help us both. It does deal one damage to each. Hmm. Well, let's see what he tries to do here. I'm... Um, okay. Flying? That's fine. That's fine. Ready one character for each player. Okay. And remember, these are free when we play these. There's also a location specific here. Summon Grimbjorn. Oh. Block and stalwart, another bear for us. So, one of the ongoing things when you're going through all these locations is to try and build up this fate meter so that you can, like, cast something, right? Um, all we need to do is defeat this bear. So, I think we are just going to ready somebody. And I guess we'll make it... Because we don't want to drop him below six. So we'll ready this guy and just attack. So he goes down to six, but now, because that's a free action from the fate bar, we kill him. Uh, see, in this situation, we should actually... We should actually do this, so that he doesn't get uh, a free attack on us. I will smite you if you touch him. And then we can travel without taking damage, right? Before the monotony of the forest claws at you again, you come upon a sudden clearing. The sluggish breeze and one grey light of the dell are a welcome change from the humid twilight of the forest. On the far side of the clearing, you spy what you've been looking for. 
a group of large spiders hovering over a tightly wound cocoon. It's time for a rescue. Okay, uh, this sounds like it might be the final thing. I don't know if we're going to be able to succeed because, well, defeat six enemy units or defeat every enemy in play. Okay. Ah, oh, that's going to be very difficult. A thick cocoon jerks wildly from side to side, slash at the strands to free the occupant. So that would maybe be somebody that could help us then. Okay, let's think about this. We need to use our big, big brain tactics here. <laughs> this is going to be tough. Uh, so we have to, if we're going to attack, we have to attack these spider guards. Okay, what's here? Exhaustive two spider units. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. If I attack here, he's now he is going to drop to less willpower in attack, which is uh, not great. Ranged, if I bring him in, he deals one damage. So he gets that arrival thing. Plus he can attack flying, but that's kind of whatever at this point. This guy would be nice. Um, I just, I'm trying to decide. Hmm. I think I have to kill this one. Hopefully he attacks with this guy before that triggers. We take the one damage. He gets reduced. He gets the boost there. She gets the boosted willpower. Um, man, it'd be really nice to have some cards give me extra draw right now, but it doesn't look like that's happening. Let's see. I have a question about guard. I'm wondering if we bring in that and deal that one damage. Attacking or exhausting this card removes guard. Okay, so I don't think this damage is going to remove the guard, which makes sense. Um, if I do the attack here, he goes down to four, so he's still alive, and then she could follow up to kill. And then we still have cards to play, and he's got cards to play too, but... Or we could just kill this. Oh, I can't attack that one. That's the problem, right? If What if I set him up on guard? If I set him up on guard right now, then uh, if he attacks it, he's dead. If he attacks it, we trade, and it's the same as me attacking him. I'm gonna do this. Okay, fine by me. Fine, fine, fine. So he's gonna he's gonna go after her. Uh, oh, yeah, right. When they're guarding, they also protect the objective. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Okay, let's put this down. Okay, so he's out. Now I could put four into this. Spider for two, which I think I'll just kill. Okay, I got three enemies left. Ah, that's not good. That's that's a lot. That is a lot. You breathe so loud, I could shoot you. I get to deal one damage here. Um, I think I got to put it on this guy. So we can use it. Now, he's out of energy, which is helpful. Oh, he's summoning a Brood Elder. 
Is that what's happening? Yeah, that is really bad. Okay, now. Defeat three enemy units. Uh, I wonder, though, what happens if we get this guy out? Damn. Okay, he's got Surge at least. Which means we can do something right away. Oh, this is so dicey. Okay, I think my play is is to to try and do uh we're going to do a a block with him. Wait. I need to get rid of this. So here's my thought. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so I can attack this eventually. Um that'll take damage so she'll go up to 3. We play him and block so then he'll get attacked and then we can play the other willpower from here yikes um oh wait that might not work shit it's gonna be tough wait here's what I do uh we use his willpower here then we play him and block. Or maybe we just... Maybe we don't even do that. Because she has seven. Let's free this. Oh, sick. You tear into this concerning large cocoon, much to your disappointment, but not to his. The cocoon contains not Bilbo, but a Bjorning by the name of Will Elk. Okay. He's tanky. Okay, we need two left. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, and he's got stalwart. He attacks twice. That's so good. He's going to kill this guy. He's going to die next turn. Uh, or is he? Hold on. Yeah, because actually, no. So I can put Sur this guy with Surge in. Call that attack... Oh, no. They'll definitely... Well, maybe they won't. We have to kind of hope that they don't target him next round, right? Uh... If I attack right here, he takes one damage back. Then I get to play this guy and set up the defense. Hmm... Because if I play this right now... Okay, I might regret this. We'll see. I just need to kill the enemies, so I'm going to just focus on killing. I need to kill one more enemy. This guy's at four. I think we can do this. Maybe. Um... She still has decent health. I'm going to trade here. He's gone. It's fine. He falls. You gain newfound respect for the hardness of the Bjornings when you realize the man is still breathing. Oh, what is... What is this? Oh. Oh, he heals to every spider. Oh my god. Minus two threat. That is literally the worst card I could have gotten there. Okay. Uh, we just need to go all in on this guy. I wasn't sure if we'd have Lady to run there or not. Gouda gathered at there we the go. Edge of their lair. That was tight. A band of orcs and goblins have emerged from the trees. Some heave empty wagons. Others carry torches. A huge orc tromps to stand before the lady. Oh, the moon is full, Spidey. 
Uthak comes to collect! He snarls. The lady chitters at her lieutenants who rush back into the webs. The spiders soon return with web-wrapped cocoons, depositing them in front of the orc captain. Goblins rush to gather the cocoons, loading them into carts. As the last cocoons are loaded, a hooded goblin begins screeching at Uthak, pointing to a parchment full of hash marks. Uthak glares at the yelling goblin for a moment and blinks and pivots back to the lady. We won short, Leggy. The orc's grainy voice is mild, but laced with promise of violence. Cold masters don't like short. Uthak don't like short. We had deal. We had deal. I like it. After recovering, Will Elk thanks you profusely. He didn't die. Over the past like we few said. months, he tells you, a number of tribesmen have gone mysteriously absent. He suspects they've fallen prey to similar circumstances, but offers no explanation as to why the great spiders have suddenly become so daring. Afraid to return home through the forest alone, Will Elk offers to join you and suggests which direction the spiders were taking him. Somewhere under the never ending trees before you, an old hobbit awaits rescue. Do. Guys, we did it. I'm happy I could show you a successful run there. That was nice. So we got uh, a decent amount of coins to use. We got the honeycomb cards. Avoid triggering any location specific threats. Use sting to defeat six enemies. Nice. Seven characters in play. Yeah, decent. Complete the quest with every hero in play. Couldn't make that happen. And then, uh, nice. So you can see, we gained those at a pretty, pretty good clip, as I was saying. Uh, so that's just quest one within this campaign, by the way. Now you got quest two. And then you got quest three, four, five. And then you got this other campaign. And then there'll be more that are coming and things like that. So, uh, I hope you guys got a good understanding of what it's like. For me, like, the key, one of the key differences... Uh, between this and other card games is the way that the turns operate because it's super hard to wrap your brain around if you're used to like spending all of your mana and all of your cards in one go and then letting the other person uh make their move it's just a different way of thinking but it's a, kind of a cool challenge if you're up for something like that uh, um i said at the beginning that i'd be giving some of my thoughts on what i really enjoy and some of the stuff that i think they could work on um the, the strong things that i really like I love the threat and the fate meters. I think that's kind of this constant impending uh, doom. I love the focus on objectives. I love the the decisions that you have to make between uh, do I put something, do I use my willpower? Do I just attack here? Do we need to block an attack? Do we need to kill enemies? Do we need to go for the objective? There's a constant struggle and it's it's super uh, hard to make it to make the right decision but it's really rewarding when it pays off. Um, I really enjoy the narrative stuff. I love how they tie that into the gameplay side of things. And I think the voice acting of the narrative stuff is really well done. And I think that's great. On to some of the criticisms. And there, I don't think there's anything that's truly game breaking here, spoiler alert, uh, in terms of uh, what my criticisms are. It's a lot of the aesthetic stuff could be improved like when i look at this screen like it's just not uh there's a certain sheen or polish that i wish was on top of this that would just clean up the ui a little bit some of the things like fade in like all this text on top of text some of the colors don't pop out some of the um buttons are hard to see when you're first playing and learning like what like when i was first going through the tutorial i didn't I, it was hard for me to figure out that these were the ways you went through the second uh, or the other sections by navigating these uh, portraits. And so, if you miss that, then you're gonna you might be frustrated. Um, when certain cards pop up, it's hard to see where the check boxes and stuff are to resolve them, just because it's kind of overlaid in a weird way. Without having played for 20 hours, it's hard to critique anything more than that. But let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear your thoughts, and uh, I hope you had a good time watching. Remember, all the links are down below. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to check this out. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll try to answer them as best as I can, and I'm sure other people have played this and will likely be able to answer that too. We will talk to you guys very soon. Bye for now.